Hi student, welcome back to subject computer graphics. For today topic is on visible surface detection. So let's find out what is visible surface detection. Here is the topic outline for today topic, which is at the end of the chapter. I hope that you'll be able to understand what is visible surface detection. You know how to distinguish the approach of visible surface detection and also to know and understand about the several type of visible surface detection algorithms. What is visible surface detection? Basically, this visible surface detection has another name which is known as hidden surface removal. Basically, based on this word, okay, visible surface detection is going to detect the surface that is visible. And another name is hidden surface removal. It's going to remove the surface that is hidden from us. Alright, so basically the visible surface detection is used to identify those parts of a scene that are visible from a chosen viewing position. Alright, it's going to identify the part that are visible from the viewing position and then it's going to remove the one that is hidden from us. Alright, that's the concept of visible surface detection. When we view a picture containing a non-transparent object and surface, then we cannot see those objects from view which are behind from object. Alright, then we must remove this hidden surface to get a realistic screen image. Alright, let's say I have one object. Okay, for example, yeah, I have uh, one object. Here is the object that we have. Alright. And then let's say this is the weaving position from this side. Okay. So basically only this part that going to be seen by me. Okay. Let's say my eye is from here. So I only see this front part only. Okay. The rest at the back here I cannot see. I cannot see from the back here. So all the part that is that I cannot see from back here will be removed and it will gonna detect only the visible part which is the front part only and then it gonna remove this invisible part at the back right so that's the concept of visible surface detection and basically there are two type or two approach or two method of visible surface detection which is we have object space method and also image space method okay there are two approach here so let's find out in the next slide what is the differences between the two approach okay for object space method and also image space method visible surface detection have two approach whether is on the approach of object space method or image space method so let's see what is the differences between these two approach so let's start with the object space method first so what is object space method basically the object space method will be implemented in physical coordinate system okay the object space will be done or will be implemented in the physical coordinate system while image space method it will be implemented or used in the screen coordinate system Okay, so here are the differences. Object space is in physical coordinate, while image space is on the screen coordinate system. And in the detail of object space method, so let's see what is this uh, mean by the implemented in physical coordinate system and what are the features in object space method. Basically, in this method, the various part of object will be compared. Okay, if you have more part in your, in your object, all of this part will be compared together and after comparison visible invisible or hardly visible surface is determined okay so it's compare all the various part and then it will be compare the visible one and also in the invisible and also the hardly visible surface will be determined okay it will be determined which one is belong to visible which one is invisible and which one is hardly visible and this method generally decide visible surface. In the wireframe model, these are used to determine a visible line. Okay, so in object space is basically will determine or will be used to detect a line. So this algorithm are line based instead of surface. 
Okay, so remember that for object space is more toward line, not the surface. It's used to detect the visible line, not the surface. And the method proceeds by determination of part of an object whose view is obstructed by other object and draw this part in the same color. Okay, so this method will be proceed by determine or detect the part that is uh, the view is obstruct. Okay, the view is blocked by other object and then it will draw this part in the same color. While image space, okay, what is say the screen is implemented in screen coordinate system and what is the features inside this image space? Here, the position of the various pixels are determined. Okay, the screen coordinate is dealing with the pixel. Okay, in image space is dealing with the pixel. So it is used to locate the visible surface instead of a visible line. Okay, here are the differences. This one is detect the line, but this image space is used to detect the surface. And each point is detect for its visibility. If a point is visible, then the pixel is on. Okay. If a point is invisible, then the pixel is off. Alright, so the object close to the weaver that is pierced by a projector through a pixel is will be determined and that pixel is drawn a appropriate color. So here are the features and the difference between the approach in the visible surface detection which is can be divided into object space and image space. Alright, so, so to say indirectly, we can say that the object space is will more toward determining which part of the object that are visible and basically it is done or implemented in the world coordinate while in image space it will determine per pixel okay, because it is on the screen coordinate so it will more toward the pixel which point of an object is visible so you can look at this figure for object space is it will determine which part that are visible only, all right, in the world coordinate. So if you look from the front view, so only front view that is visible, okay, at the back of this object will be removed. Why in object space, it will determine per pixel, all right, so it will identify or detect which point of this pixel is visible, okay, this is the image space toward the screen coordinate. Let's look into the algorithm for the object space method. So for each object in the scene, it will do this step, right? It's begin with the first step. It will determine those part of the object which view is unobstructed by other part of it or any other object with respect to the viewing specification. All right, first it begin with the Detecting or determine which part of the object which is the view is not unobstructed. Okay, unobstructed is mean is not blocked by other part of the other object. Right, the view is not blocked by other part of the other object. After that, it will draw those part in the object color, and then it will end the algorithm. Okay, so it's begin by determine those part of the object which is not blocked by other part of the object. And then it will draw those part in the object color and then it will end the algorithm. So basically in this object space method, it will compare each object with all other object to determine which one or which part is visible to that object part. If there are n object in the scene, okay, if there are a number how many number of object in the scene? The complexity equal to O n power of 2. Okay, n is representing the number of object in the scene. And the calculation are performed at the resolution in which the object are defined. And this only limited by the computation hardware only. And the display for object space method will more accurate and more computational, more expensive compared to the image space method because it involves step one, which is the comparison basically is more complex for object space method due to the possibility of the intersection between surface. So it's quite complex to compare those intersections together. 
and basically this object space method is suitable for a scene with a small number of object only and with a object with simple relationship with each other so how about the algorithm for image space method for the algorithm for this for each pixel in the image it will start or begin with the determining the object that is closest to the viewer that is pierced by the projector through the pixel one is determine the object that is closest to the viewer it will draw the pixel in the object color and that it will end the algorithm so this is the difference between the image space and the object space method so basically for each pixel it will examine all the end object to determine the one that is closest to the viewer okay it will examine all the numbers of object and then it will determine which one that is closest to the viewer if there are p pixels in the image the complexity depends on the n and also the p okay the complexity if depends on the n and also the P. N is the number of object, P is the pixels. And the accuracy of the calculation is bounded by the display of the resolutions. In general, there are several visible surface detection algorithms, but the one that we're co gonna cover inside this topic gonna be backface detection algorithm. Z buffer method algorithm, scanline method algorithm, and also depth sorting algorithm. So let's find out each of these algorithms in the next slide. Let's find out for the first algorithm of the visible surface detection, which is namely back face detection. All right, the first algorithm is back face detection and this back face detection is under the category of object space method and what this back face detection algorithms doing inside this visible surface detection all right in a solid object there are surface which are facing us or facing the viewer we call the part or the surface that facing the viewer as the front face Okay, because it's facing us or facing the viewer or facing the eye. Okay, so it's considered as a front face. And there are surface or the part which are opposite to the viewer. Okay, it's opposite from our eye. So we consider this as a back face. And this back face contribute to approximately half of the total number of the surface. And since we cannot see this surface anyway, okay, we cannot see the back faces part. So to save processing time, to save the storage, we can remove them before the clipping process with a simple test. All right. So if you look at this figure, okay, this is the viewing direction. This is us as a user, and this is the eye of the human, which is consider as a viewing direction okay so we view from this direction and this is the object that we're gonna view okay this is the object that we have and direction is coming from this side so basically the one that face the viewer is this part only okay is only this part that can be seen by us so we consider this as a front face and the surface which are opposite of the viewer okay which are opposite of the viewer which is in the back here okay the back surface here we call this as a back faces so basically the one that is face us will be visible and the part or surface that are back to the viewer or at the back face will be removed all right, so here is the concept of the back face detection based on the name itself is going to detect which part which are visible and consider as a front face and then if we remove the one that is opposite to the viewer which is back face and how to test whether the surface is on the front face or back face okay let's find out this simple test in the next slide for back face detections each surface has a normal vector if this vector is pointing in the direction of the center of projection okay i 
hope that you still remember the center of projection in our previous topic is about the weaver okay weaving position so if the pointing is in the direction of the center of projection it is considered as a front face and it can be seen by the viewer if it's pointing away from the center of projection it is considered as a back face and we cannot see this from the viewer position and the test for this is very simple okay suppose that the z axis is pointing toward the viewer if the z component of the normal vector is negative then it is considered as a back face and if the z component of the vector is positive it is considered as a front face and please remember that this technique is only caters or is only can work well for non-overlapping convex polyhedron surface only what is polyhedron okay in geometry polyhedron is a three-dimensional shape with flat polygonal face straight edge and also sharp corner of order vertex and basically this poly polyhedron is a solid figure with many plane face typically more than six okay here is the example of how this uh, polyhedron look like okay for other cases than this non-overlapping convex polyhedron Okay, for example, if it's concave polyhedron or overlapping object, we still need to apply other method than this back face detection algorithm to further determine where the obscure face are partially or completely hidden by other object. Okay, the other algorithm that can use to cater this kind of object is using depth buffer method or depth sort method. Alright, so here is the basic concept of how the back face detection algorithm working. The second algorithm is namely as a depth buffer method. Okay, or another name for depth buffer method is the Z buffer method. So basically this depth buffer method is under the category of image based method. And this approach will compare the surface depth at each pixel position on the projection plane. Okay, since it's an image based method, so it's implemented at the pixel level. So this approach will compare the surface depth at each pixel position. And this object depth is basically or usually measured from the view plane along the Z axis of the viewing system. And this method requires two buffers. Okay, it has two buffers for this algorithm. One is image buffer, and the other buffer name as a Z buffer. Alright, so each of this buffer has the same resolution as the image to be captured. And what is the purpose of this two buffer? The image buffer purpose is used to store the color value of each pixel position. Okay, this is the image buffer role. Is the role is to store the color value okay, of each pixel position. And the Z buffer is responsible to store the depth value for each X and Y coordinate position. Alright, so image buffer is store color value. Z buffer is used to store the depth value. Let's look into the depth buffer method algorithms. Okay, so basically this algorithm starts with the each pixel of the Z buffer is set to the maximum depth value. Alright, so this is the first step. It will set the Z buffer to the maximum depth value. And then next, the image buffer will be set to the background color. Alright, first Z buffer set to maximum depth value image buffer set to the background color and then the surface are rendered at one at a time okay the surface will be rendered one at a time for the first surface the depth value of each pixel is calculated and based on this calculation if the depth value is smaller okay is smaller than the corresponding depth value in the Z buffer this means that it is close to the viewpoint so both of the depth value in the Z buffer and the color value in the image buffer will be replaced by the depth value 
and the color value of this surface will be calculated at the pixel position. And once of this calculation is done, this algorithm will need to repeat the step number 4, okay, and then step number 5 for the remaining surface. Okay, this is the first cycle, and then if there are more surface after that, so you need to repeat the step number 4 and also step number 5 until all of the surface will be processed. Alright, after all of the surface have been processed, each pixel of the image buffer will be represent the color of the visible surface at that pixel. Alright, as an example of the depth buffer methods, let's S1, S2 and S3 are the surface that we have. Okay, we have surface 1, surface 2 and surface 3. And the surface closest to the projection planes is called visible surface. The computer will start with surface 1, alright, and put its value into the buffer. It will do the same for the next surface, surface 2 and surface 3, put into the buffer for the next surface. And then it will then check each of overlapping pixel and check to see which one is the closer. Okay, which one is the closer to the viewer and then display the appropriate color. As at view plane position X and Y here, the surface S1 has the smaller depth from the view plane, so it is visible at this position. The next algorithm that can be used in the visible surface detection is depth sorting algorithm. Alright, so how the depth sorting algorithm works? Basically, the depth sorting is used both of the image space and also object space operation. So basically, the depth sorting method is a combination right, between the image space and also object space method. So the depth sorting method performs two basic functions. Okay, there are two steps or two basic functions that depth sorting algorithm perform. The first one is that the surface will be sought in order of decreasing of depth. Alright, this is the first step, which is the surface will be sought in order of the decreasing of the depth. And then second, the surface are then scan converted in order, starting with the surface of the greatest depth. Alright, first is sought and then second is scan converted in order. And then uh, this order is based on the surface that have the greatest depth first. Alright. So the scan conversion of the polygon surface is performed in image space and this method is solving the hidden surface problem. And the other name of the depth sorting algorithm is Painter algorithm. Okay, The depth sorting algorithm is also known as the Painter algorithm. So the algorithm of depth sorting will start by sorting by depth first. And then, for example, if we have the initial depth estimate of a polygon, may be taken to be the closest Z value of any vertex of the polygon. Let us take an example of we have polygon P at the end of the list. And then we need to consider all the polygons Q whose Z extend overlap P. Right? Before drawing a P, we make the following test. Alright, so we need to have some tests first. If any of the following tests is positive, then we can assume P polygon can be drawn before the Q1, right? So all the tests that need to be tested is the first one is do the X extend not overlap? Do the Y extend not overlap? Is P entirely on the opposite side of Q plane from the viewpoint? Is Q entirely on the same side of P plane as the viewpoint? Do the projection of the polygon not overlap? So this is all the tests that the algorithm need to perform in order to assume whether the P can be drawn before Q polygon or not. All right. So this is some tests that need to be performed. And if all the tests fail, then we can split either P or Q using the plane of the other. All right. So if all the test is positive, then P can be drawn before Q. If all the tests are failed, we need to split either P or Q. Alright, so the new cut polygon are inserting into the depth order and the process continue until the end of the surface. 
So uh, in general, this partitioning could generate the O and power of 2 in video polygon, but in practice, the number of polygon is much smaller. Alright, to understand more on this depth sorting algorithm, let's look into this example together. Alright, step number one, we'll start the algorithm. And then step number two, it will sort all the polygon by Z value. And it will keep the largest value of Z first. Alright, so it will start algorithm, it sort the polygon by Z value. And then step number three, it will scan convert polygon in this order. And in the step number three, there are tests that need to be performed, okay, to test whether the polygon is in the order or not. So here are the several tests that need to perform, okay. Does A is behind and non-overlapping B in the dimension of Z as shown in figure A, okay. So this one. So it needs to test whether this A is behind and non-overlapping B in the dimension of Z value. Okay, and then second test, you need to test whether the A is behind B in the Z and no overlapping in X or Y as shown in figure B. Okay, this one. Alright, so you need to test whether this A is behind B okay, in Z view and no overlapping in the X and Y as shown in figure B, this one, right? So this is the X direction and then it's Y direction. And then test number three, it needs to test whether the A is behind B, okay, in Z, and totally outside B with respect to the view plane as shown in figure C, this one, okay? It needs to test whether A is behind B, okay, in the Z view and then totally outside from B, okay, to view plane. And then test number four, if A is behind B, all right, in Z view, and then B is totally inside A with respect to view plane as shown in figure D, this one, okay. If A is behind B in a Z view, and then B is totally inside A, okay, you need to test all of these tests, okay, if it's uh, all positive. Okay, if all pass this, so then it need to convert polygon in order, but it fail, so it need to uh, test whether it has the overlappings on the other surface or not. Okay, and then the success of any test with single overlapping polygon allow F to be painted. Alright, so after it's done, it, it need to paint. That's why the other name of the depth sorting is is namely as a painter algorithm because we need to paint the surface or polygon. The next algorithm used in visible surface detection is namely scanline algorithm. Alright, so basically this scanline algorithm is under the category of image space method which is, is used to identify the visible surface of an object. And this method has a depth information for only single scanline only. And in order to require one scan line of depth value, we must group and process all the polygon intersecting at a given scan line at the same time before processing the next scan line. Alright, so if you look at this figure here, we have the object of surface 1 and surface 2 and have the edge of each surface. We have H, A, B, C, D. Okay, and then for the surface 2, we have the edge of G, E, F, and H here, okay? H is the buchu, all right? So, and then we have the scan line 1, scan line 2, scan line 3, and so on. And uh, it's need to process all of this polygon intersecting at a given scan line at the same time before processing for the to the scan line number 2 and before processing to the scan line number 3, all right? And there are two important tables here inside the scanline algorithm which is H table and also polygon table. So what is the use of H table and the polygon table? The H table will contain or consist of the coordinate endpoint of each line in the scene. Okay. Beside that it also have the inverse slope of each line and also the pointer in the polygon table to connect edges to surface. 
So this is what the edge tables contains. And how about the polygon tables? The polygon table will contain or consist of the plane coefficients, surface material properties, other surface data, and also a pointers to the edge table. So here are the difference data contained in each table okay this is uh what the each table have and then this is how what the features that polygon table have and here is the scan line algorithm where it have several steps to follow to perform this scan line algorithm so let's study how this scan line algorithm works okay step number one it will start the algorithm and then step number two it will initialize the desired data structure where inside this step there are several sub procedure that happen inside this step number two okay so how this algorithm perform the initialization of the desired data structure first it will create a polygon table having the an information like color the edge pointer and also the coefficients and then it will establish edge table which contain information regarding the endpoint of the edges, pointer to polygon and inverse slope. After establish the edge table, it will create an active edge list where this list will be sought in increasing order of the X. Okay. And step number four, it will create a flex or we can call this a F. It will have two values either on or off. All right, and then as we go to the step number three, okay, after we have initialized the desired data structure, this algorithm will perform the following step for all scan line. All right, so based on the number of surface and object that we have, first it will enter the value in active edge list. Okay, the active edge list is already get from the step number two here. Okay, it will enter the value of this in sorted order using y as value and then it will scan scan until the flex okay for example f is on using a background color when one polygon flag is on and this is for surface s1 for example it's enter the color intensity as i1 into the refresh buffer when two or image surface flag are on it will sort the surface according to the depth and also the use of intensity values for the N surface okay how many n surface we don't know is test until how many surface that it have and this surface will have least z depth value and is use the concept of coherent for the remaining plane okay we test for all the object and also all the plane is have in the polygon and then when it's done with this this algorithm will stop all right all right the next algorithm that can be used in visible surface detection is BSP3. Alright, so what is BSP? The full form for BSP is stand for binary space partitioning. Alright, so basically this binary space partitioning tree algorithm is used when the object is fixed. Alright, the object is fixed and when the viewer is viewing from different different points. Alright, so is this is how this algorithm works. Okay, when the object is fixed and then the viewer is viewing from different point. So let's look at this figure. Alright, here is the figure that we have, and then we have this object. Okay, this is the object. A and B is one object. Alright. C is one object, and also D is one object. Alright, so P1, here we have P1 intersection and also P2 intersection. So this is how we read this intersection or we call this as a division line. Alright, so let's consider the P1 case first. Okay, so P1, okay, P1 line here is the intersection lines or division line for two parts. Alright, this one part Okay, this is one part and this is one part. Okay, if we look from this P1 division, okay, P1 division will divide this part, this whole part and also this whole part. Alright. So from this, from this P1, this whole part will be considered as the front. 
Alright, this whole part will be considered as a front part and this whole part will become the back part. Alright, so this is the front part and this is the back part from P1 division. If we divide this whole part and this whole part, this one will be front, this one will be back. Okay, so based on this P1 division and this one is front, this one is back. So we can consider that object A and C, okay, A and C is on this side, so it's considered as a front part, right? A and C is front part, and then B and D, okay, B and D is the back part because it's on this area. Similarly, P2, okay, from this P2 view, alright? So P2 is the, this P2 line is the intersecting or division line, okay, from this view, alright. Just now we are looking from this P2, from this view. So by using this P2 intersecting line, it will divide uh, into two whole parts, okay, this one and also this one, alright. Just now we are working on P2. So it will divide this part and also this part. So, for this P2, this whole part will become front part. Okay, this one is a front part. And then this whole part will become back part. Alright, this is from P2 view. This one all is become front. All of, and then all of this will become back. Alright, so if based on this P2, so A and B is a front part. And then C and D is a back part. So, after we understand on the figure in the previous slide, so what we can summarize from that figure is that, so when we consider P1 view, okay, from the P1 view, A and C are fronts, B and D object are at the back. Alright, so this is the P1 case. For P2, okay, from the P2 case, we can see that from the P2 part, a and B object are at the front part, while C and D are the back part. Alright, so this is uh, for two cases here, P1 and P2. So A and C are become front and B and D are back for the P1 case. A and B are, will be at the front part and C and D are at the back part for the P2 view. So, now we combine them together okay so we now combine them together p1 p2 p2 okay this is how we read or develop this tree okay we combine them together p1 p2 and p2 so p1 front okay p1 front and p2 front is a object all right p1 front p2 front is a object P1 front, P2 back is a C object, alright. P1 back, P2 front is a B object. And P1 back and P2 back is D object. Okay, so in this way we can form a tree. Okay, it looks like a tree. That's why the name is BSP tree. Right, this is how we read this combination for two cases P1 and P2 and from which part is front and back. So to say indirectly, we can summarize that for this algorithm, first is that the back part will be analyzed first. And then when the back part is done, then it will analyze the front part. 